Hey, Mom. Yeah, I have seen it. It's great. Hey, Tony. Have you seen the Fantastic Fungi film? All right, we better do this video. Fantastic Fungi is a documentary all about mushrooms. It's actually been in the works for a really long time and was released in theaters a couple years ago, but just recently it was released on Netflix and has been shown to a huge audience. This film is characterized by these amazing time lapses of mushrooms growing in all these incredible different ways. These time lapses give us some perspective on an aspect of nature that's typically invisible to the naked eye. Not only is this documentary visually stunning, it puts mushrooms at the center stage, finally giving them the spotlight that they deserve. I've always been fascinated by fungi, but it's super cool to see mushrooms going mainstream. But I thought it'd be fun to do this video and talk about some of my favorite parts of Fantastic Fungi and some of the parts that I found most interesting. Speaking of bringing the fascination of fungi to the world, there's no better place to start than with Mr. Stamets. Paul Stamets is definitely an icon in the mushroom world. If you're into mushrooms, you for sure know who he is. And even if you're not into mushrooms, you probably know him as that crazy mushroom guy that wears a crazy mushroom hat. He's a bit of a renegade in the world of science, but has definitely contributed a lot to the body of knowledge about mushrooms. For example, he's done things like shown how mushrooms can be used to prevent carpenter ants from taking down houses, or shown how mushrooms can be used to clean up oil spills, or even more recently shown how mushrooms and mushroom extracts might be able to save the bees. There is no doubt that without Paul Stamets, we would know a lot less about mushrooms than we do today, and there'd be a lot less interest in mushrooms in general, including myself. I first learned how to grow mushrooms after reading Paul's book, and I got really interested in the different things mushrooms can do after reading his other book, Mycelium Running. Paul obviously plays a central role in this film because of his influence in mushrooms, but what is pretty interesting in the film is how he talks about his origin story or how he first got interested in mushrooms, and it's pretty wild. Basically, it goes something like this. He had a really irreparable stutter and he wasn't able to talk to girls, and because of that, he always had his head down just kind of looking at the ground, and you know, he would look at mushrooms, which seems to be kind of aside from the main story. But one day, he took a heroic dose of psilocybin mushrooms, and when he says a heroic dose, he means like way more than normal people would even take for a heroic dose, which definitely don't try this at home. And he was out in the woods, and for whatever reason, he decided to climb a tree. He climbed right to the top of the tree, and it just so happened to be at the same time that a massive storm came rolling in, so much so that he couldn't get off the tree. So what he did was hung onto the tree for dear life, kind of swayed back and forth, looking out on the horizon, watching the lightning and the rain, and having this really revelatory experience, a really mystical experience, a really near-death experience, basically. But eventually, the storm cleared, he came down the tree, and he felt pretty good, and he went home and went to bed. But when he woke up, he started walking around, and a girl talked to him, and he didn't stutter. So it seems this experience with the mushroom somehow cleared up his stutter, and he met this girl, and it's a great story. It's clear that Paul has dedicated his life to mushrooms and inspired the world to learn more about the Fifth Kingdom. And a lot of that stuff is shown in this documentary. It's not just Paul either. There's a lot of other people in this documentary like Eugenia Bone and Michael Pollan and Dennis McKenna and many others that speak about the powers of mushrooms. Fungi are some of the oldest and some of the most resilient organisms on the planet. And this is talked about in great detail in this film. The underground mycelium network is so important and so overlooked. In this documentary, however, we're able to see how mycelial networks are able to support life in so many different ways. Perhaps the main talking point of this film is a calling to connect to the organisms that sustain us. For example, mushrooms are basically the digestive tracts of the forest, even though they're barely seen or acknowledged. Mycelium enables ecosystem communication. It's kind of like the internet of the forest and also allows for nutrient sharing between different plants. Carbon fuels the microbial community and fungi are responsible for stabilizing the carbon in soils. This all ties back to the fundamental idea that fungi play a super important role in ecosystem maintenance. One specific example of this that they show in the documentary is an experiment that was done with oyster mushrooms and oil spills. So basically they took two different piles of organic material covered in oil, and one of them was inoculated with oyster mushroom mycelium and the other one was just left as is. In the oyster pile, the mycelium just happened to grow throughout the whole pile and eventually fruited mushrooms. Those mushrooms and the spores brought birds, those birds brought the seeds, and it was just this little island of life. Whereas the other pile that wasn't 
wasn't treated with mushrooms was just kind of sitting there dead. And it just shows on a micro scale how important mushrooms are in managing our ecosystem. Now, does this mean that you can just use mushrooms and go clean up oil spills? Well, not really. It's a very specific example, but still it highlights the importance that mushrooms play in our ecosystems. One other thing that I thought was interesting highlighted by this documentary is that when humans do eventually go extinct, it's very likely that mushrooms will take over the world. Looking beyond mycelial networks, we can of course enjoy the labor of mycelial networks, mushroom fruiting bodies. From culinary to medicinal applications, the varieties of these different mushrooms and the powers that they hold is what inspires me and is why we do what we do here at Fresh Cat. This documentary in particular doesn't go too in depth on medicinal mushrooms, but it does talk a lot about the different compounds and the different ways that mushrooms can produce these compounds that might have an effect on our bodies and on our minds. One really interesting and maybe less obvious one is penicillin. People often forget that penicillin is produced from a fungus, which has had a massive impact on the world as an antibiotic. But it also talks about different ways that mycelium can produce compounds and kind of vaccinate itself against other diseases. I've even seen experiments where you can put little pieces of mycelium on a petri dish and put some sort of pathogen on the other side, like a staph bacteria or something like that. And the mycelium will actually produce a specific antibiotic that will protect itself against that pathogen. So mycelium are kind of chemical compounds, mushrooms are kind of chemical compounds, and these compounds can have an effect on the mushrooms, but also on ourselves. The two medicinal mushrooms that they do talk about are lion's mane and turkey tail. Now lion's mane obviously is the brain mushroom, so they talk a lot about how lion's mane might be able to help our cognitive health, specifically also talking about neurogenesis. Lion's mane is an incredible mushroom, and if you wanna learn more about it, we do have an entire video on it and a full guide, which you can go check out if you wanna watch that. The other medicinal mushroom that they go into depth on in this video is turkey tail, and it's amazing immune supporting and immune boosting properties. In the documentary, they tell the story about Paul Stamets' mother, her battle with breast cancer, and the healing properties of turkey tail mushroom, and it's a pretty amazing story. We did do a fully in-depth video on turkey tail mushroom, and if you wanna check that out, you can watch that right here. One of the most intriguing aspects of this documentary is the so-called stoned ape theory. This is a theory postulated by Dennis McKenna, an ethnopharmacologist, and Terence McKenna, who's an author and a proponent of psychedelics, who has a bazillion lectures on YouTube, which you should probably go listen to. They're really cool. But the theory goes like this. They put forward this idea that magic mushrooms, or psilocybin and magic mushrooms, were at least partially responsible for the rapid development of the human brain. Psilocybin has a profound effect on the human mind, one of which is the blending of sensory experiences. For example, something like hearing colors or seeing sounds. And when you think about it, language is kind of a form of the synesthesia, where you associate sound and meaning. If you look at evolutionary history, there's this weird thing where the human brain evolved insanely fast over a two million year period, when our ancestors were emerging from the trees and starting to inhabit the grasslands, they would also try herds of animals, where it's very possible that they would run into Psilocybe cubensis growing on the dung of those animals. So what happened during this two million year period was a rapid development of the language centers in the brain. Following this line of thought, this theory postulates that psilocybin is somewhat directly responsible for the formation of human language. Speaking of psilocybin, one of the main themes in this film is the potential of psilocybin as a medicine. The documentary does talk a fair bit about the history of psilocybin, how we first learned about it, the whole thing during the 60s and the whole thing where it got banned and research got stopped. But where the documentary really shines is highlighting some of the emergence or the renaissance of psychedelic research and how it could be potentially amazingly helpful for all sorts of people. Specifically, they highlight a number of cases where people are using psilocybin in a clinical setting to help with end of life anxiety. And when you watch the film, it is really Really quite emotional to see how these people are dealing with um, really scary and troubling situations but are kind of put at ease through this transformational psilocybin experience where they're able to kind of internalize what's happening and who really knows what they're experiencing but it's clear that it's amazingly beneficial and uplifting and helps people deal with some of the toughest things that humans ever would have to go through and who knows there's a lot of conversations going on about this right now a lot of research going on about this right now and it's a really interesting topic in my opinion and I'm really excited to see where the future leads. 
In my opinion, Fantastic Fungi is definitely fantastic. And if you haven't watched it and you're interested in mushrooms, even if you're not interested in mushrooms, you should definitely watch it. It does an amazing job of bringing mushrooms to the main stage and helping tell that story. I mean, I've always been fascinated by mushrooms and I think there's so many interesting things to learn and to teach about mushrooms. And this documentary does a really good job of getting everybody interested in such a fascinating topic. If you did see the documentary, I would love to know what you thought of it. So let me know in the comments below what you thought of the film. By the way, if you like mushrooms, you don't have to watch Fantastic Fungi because we have great mushroom content here basically every week. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're down there as well, go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps that channel grow and you never know, maybe we'll be on Netflix one day too. We'll see you in the next video.